What's up everybody? Very rarely do I do tutorials as I'm not very good at them, but I'd like to uh, help out a friend today. So we're going to be teaching you how to get the EPSXE emulator running and uh, completely configured. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step on how to get EPSXE running and also how to run your games. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a zip file decompressor or whatever they're called. Um, my personal favorite is 7-Zip. Now you're going to go to 7-Zip's website, scroll down until you find uh, the whatever bit windows you use, you're going to want to download that exe file. Um, I believe if you're on another source like Linux they have files, but for day today we're going to be doing Windows. Uh, you are going to want to download it and uh, it'll look about something like this when it's done. <laughs> so you're going to get all your files that you can unzip are going to show up here. You get your add, your extract, your test, copy, move, delete, info. Um, but we're going to come back to that real quick. Now that you have your 7-zip unlocker, you're going to want to go to an emulator site. My favorite personally for this is just to go direct to the source is epsxe.com. You scroll down, you'll go to downloads, and then you'll find the old version of this. You're going to want to find the 900 kilobyte version, Windows 32, uh, 1.9.25, and you're going to want to download it. And when you click on it, you're going to find that it's going to show all the files necessary to run EPSXE. You're going to want to extract, and for ease of access, I just went desktop. You guys can find a folder that you want, but I went desktop, type that in. Uh, PSX E2, I guess. I've already got the file, so I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, hit OK. All right, now the thing's been extracted. You're going to want to minimize this. And you're going to want to find the BIOS folder, which you can go to loveroms.com slash extra slash PSS BIOS. The link will be in the description below. You're going to want to scroll down, find the American version of the BIOS, and hit download now. It's going to download the STPH1001 zip file. You're going to click on it. You're going to extract it to, and to make this easier, you can actually just extract it to the folder that you just created. So desktop slash PSXE2. That'll make your job a little bit easier there. You're going to minimize here, come down, and what you're going to want now is the GPU plugins that allow the video card you have to run this thing. You're going to want to go to Emulator Zone, and the link will be in the description. You'll find Pete's GPU Plugins 1.77. You're going to download it. Now it's going to come out as a zip file once again. You're going to want to extract all these files, bring them down to your newly generated folder, the PSXE2. Click OK, and that part is done. And a lot of people have not had good luck with downloading ISOs. Um, a lot of them come in as bins, so you're going to want an ISO converter as well. My favorite so far has been Ultra ISO, and it's very easy to download. It's free, and you just come over here. You go to the website easybsystems.com slash ultra ISO. You hit free trial. You're going to want to download the very first link, which is download site number one USA. You're going to click on it. It is also going to be a zip file, so you're going to click on it as well. When it opens up, you're just going to extract it like a normal program. You'll be able to run it, and it should come up looking something like this when you're done. Um, you're going to want to go to Tools. When it opens up, you're going to go to Convert. You're going to find the ISO file that you've downloaded. I've already downloaded Crash Bandicoot, so you're going to want to find it. It's a bin file for me. So I'm going to click on it, hit open, you're going to want to make sure that it goes to standard ISO and that it's the actual thing that you picked and that it's going to your output directory of wherever you would like it to be. So if you want it on your desktop and have it go to the PSXE2 folder, then you'll click on it, hit OK, 
and that will now go to your directory. You're going to want to hit convert. Should take just a few seconds. Image convert OK. You're going to close this, close out Ultra ISO, and then you're going to want to go to your folder that you created. So if you've created PSXE2, you're going to find it, click on it, open it up. Now that the P GPU plugins have been extracted, you're just going to want to find all those and you're going to want to move them to your plugins folder. And it should look something like this. The version of PSXE that uh, I downloaded and that you're going to want to download comes with a few already. You're going to want to come down here to the bin file, the SCPH1001. You're going to want to move that into the BIOS folder. There should not be anything else other than this erase me folder or this erase me file. Don't worry about that. You want to fix that. Then you're going to want to double click on EPSXE. Once your converted file is good, you should be able to run ISO. This should already be conf configured, but just in case, we're going to go to Wizard Guide, Config. You're going to want to make sure that that's clicked. That's your BIOS folder. You're going to make sure that Pete's OpenGL Driver 1.77 is clicked. Click Next. This is the only one you can click, so just click Next. That's okay, so you click Next. Now, you can configure your controller. I already have mine configured, but if you just click on each thing, you can use your controller to uh, set those up. Um, I'm using an Xbox One controller. Uh, I've heard rumors you can use PS3 controllers. Uh, feel free to just plug yours in and see if they work. But uh, I would recommend a Rock Candy Xbox One controller. I think it works very perfectly. I'm a Sony guy and a PS4 guy, but uh, for PC gaming, I definitely picked up an Xbox One controller. Um, but it's just personal preference for you guys. Here's it set up completely. Click OK. Hit Next. And then click Done. And your EPSXE 1.9.25 is officially set up. Now to run your ISO. What you're going to do is you're going to want to come up to File. You're going to want to go to Run ISO. You're going to want to come down and find the file that you turned into an ISO file. Uh, you're going to click Open. The screen is going to go black for a second. Uh, if you have it on full screen, it'll be the entire screen will go black. If you have it on windowed, your window will go black. And basically after a few seconds, the game will start up. You'll be able to hit buttons and stuff on your controller to get the screen to a little bit faster. And then there you go, guys. That is how you get Crash Bandicoot 2 working on PSXE. That is how you get PSXE working in its entirety. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thank you.